Hello and welcome to a new episode of A Plane to the Stars. I apologize for not having uploaded for some time, as so many things were going on, including the rise of artificial intelligence. Basically, it rose for some time already, but just now people realized what you can do with it. We still don't have artificial general intelligence, a machine that can reason and really deserves the term intelligence, but we now have all sorts of amazing new tools that can do things that seemed impossible a while ago, and things change weekly now. A time span like next year seems totally unpredictable already. But I love new tools, and I want to figure out new ways of showing things and telling stories. So let's try if it is possible to tell a story with my new companions. A large language model, assisting with writing this script, and an image generation AI. In fact, nearly every single image in this video has been generated by an AI to my specifications. And even the voice you hear is artificial now. I'm not actually speaking, this is just an AI clone of my voice. It seems quite perfect, but somehow you still notice it lacks personality and emotion after a while. Let's see how this turns out. It's just an experiment. Maybe my real voice learned something. Today, we're embarking on a thought experiment to help you grasp distances. We'll be traveling these, even astronomical ones, using a Boeing 737, the most common passenger plane at its average cruising speed. Not using space probes going several times the speed of a bullet at all. We're disregarding real-world limitations and assuming straight-line travel and the shortest distances between objects. Buckle up and let's explore the universe. Our first stop takes us from London to New York. The distance between these two cities is approximately 5,585 kilometers or 3,471 miles. A Boeing 737 cruises at around 870 kilometers per hour or 540 miles per hour. So this transatlantic journey would take just under six and a half hours. That's enough time to watch a couple of movies or catch some sleep. Now, let's travel along Earth's equator, which measures around 40,075 kilometers or 24,901 miles in length. It would take us about 46 hours to complete this journey. That's nearly two full days in the air. Moving beyond Earth, we'll head to the Moon. The closest distance between Earth's surface and the Moon's surface is about 355,600 kilometers, or 221,007 miles. Our Boeing cruising speed would take approximately 408 hours or 17 days to reach our celestial neighbor. Next, we venture to the Sun and each planet in our solar system. The distances and travel times become a bit different. Earth to Venus. That would be a five-year journey, five years on a plane. This could get a bit boring already after a few months. Earth to Mars. This would not be any better with a travel time of seven years. Earth to Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. It would take us already ten years to reach it. What would you do on a plane for ten years? And it is getting hotter, because Earth to the Sun is our next attempt. That would be double the time, nearly twenty years. Let's go the other way again to the gas giants in our solar system. It's cooler there. Earth to Jupiter. Buckle up for 77 years of travel. That's a whole lifetime in a plane. But it would be a nice view at the end of our life. The next try would be Earth to Saturn. Well, that's a bit more than a lifetime. Prepare for a 158-year journey. A turtle on a plane might see Saturn. Now numbers become crazy. Earth to Uranus would take us 340 years to arrive, and we would be still right within our solar system. That might give an impression of how large it actually is. The plane would have to have started at the time of Isaac Newton to arrive at Uranus right now. If you wanted to arrive at Neptune, the outermost planet in the solar system, you should have started at the time of the first printing press, because Johannes Gutenberg made it 566 years ago. But you will be happy to hear that to get to the dwarf planet Pluto, it would only take three years less with 563 years, as it is sometimes closer than Neptune, because Pluto's orbit is highly eccentric, meaning that it is not a perfect circle, but more of an elongated ellipse. But let us look at our next destination, which is Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to Earth, located about 4.24 light years away. That's a jaw-dropping 40 trillion kilometers or 25 trillion miles. 
At our cruising speed, it would take a staggering 5.3 million years to reach this neighboring star. Let's now traverse our entire galaxy, the Milky Way. It spans roughly 100,000 light years across. In our passenger airplane, this incredible journey would take around 124 billion years to complete. There is no time we could have started to arrive just now, as time itself is only 13.8 billion years old. At this time in the past, the universe itself came into existence. You would need nine times more time than the age of the universe to travel across a single galaxy. But the universe is full of billions of galaxies. What about getting to the neighbor of the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy? This would be a trip of 2.5 million light years. At the puny speed of a passenger airplane, this intergalactic voyage would take a time that is hard to grasp, approximately three trillion years, 230 times the current age of the universe. Let's jump right to our final journey across the entire observable universe, which stretches an unimaginable distance of 93 billion light years. Yet one passenger plane crawls across it at a constant pace. This results in a number of 115.5 quadrillion years to complete the journey. This time span certainly makes no sense to a brain. It is easy to think that it is not connected to any process in nature. Yet it is only the evaporation time for a theoretical black hole with a mass of 40 trillion kilograms. This is basically the mass of a small asteroid. But the smallest black holes we know of start with three times the mass of our sun, and we also know of ones with billions of times its mass. They will evaporate over a time span compared to which the time of a Boeing across the universe is ridiculous. Our thought experiment has taken us to a point where time loses its meaning, yet by using a familiar mode of transportation, maybe you have gained a new perspective on the vastness of the cosmos that surrounds you. Thank you for joining me on this cosmic adventure. If you enjoyed this new type of video, give it a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Morn1415 and the real world is incredible.